Fungal diseases can be difficult to control, but bacterial diseases are even more so. We're gonna talk about bacterial diseases in corn, soybeans, and wheat. All right, here's the unfortunate part. When we talk fungal diseases, like Darren said, we can control those because we have fungicides. With bacteria, all right, we'd have to have a bactericide. Well, what are we gonna do for bactericides? There aren't a lot of ones that are what we would call very effective out there. So you'll see some treatments like copper, for example. People will use that as a topical treatment on top of leaves. That does burn the leaf some. It sometimes has some effect on some of the bacteria. But what are you gonna do when you don't have great bactericides? Well, let's talk about that copper too real quick, Brian. When we think about nutrients, that's one that gets neglected on many soil tests. In fact, most of the soil tests we see don't even have copper tested on them. We need to see a decent level of copper in your soil. That could help you a little bit and help your plants resist that disease a little bit longer. So here's Darren's whole point. What we're talking about, since we don't have great bactericides, we have to do a better job with soil fertility and overall plant fertility. So we'd encourage you to do a good job soil testing and tissue testing and look at the micronutrients like copper that is incredibly important in Turlian disease. And yes, you could use copper as a foliar treatment as well to help on bacteria. But the other thing is picking the right variety. That's the number one thing I would tell you. If you've got a bacterial disease, make sure you are talking to your seed dealer about that bacterial disease to say, hey, I've got to have something that's really good on that particular disease with tolerance. Let's take Goss's wilt, for example. Corn breeders have really worked hard over this last decade on increasing the tolerance level of hybrids for Goss's wilt. And we've seen a big change in corn hybrids all the way down into the late 80 day maturity corn. We're seeing some pretty good Goss's wilt tolerance available on the market today. That's great. That's much better than it's been. The challenge can be though, when does that Goss's set in? And the earlier it sets in, the more potential yield loss that you're going to have. The other bacterial disease in corn that's become bigger and bigger over the last few years has been bacterial leaf streak or xanthomonas. When we see bacterial leaf streak out there, farmers get really nervous. It looks a lot like gray leaf spot, although the, the lesions have irregular margins on the edges, so you can tell the difference uh, without having to send it in. Bacterial leaf streak, though, isn't as bad a disease, in our opinion, as Goss's wealth, at least to to date, we haven't seen any huge yield losses out there, so it's one that we are managing. We are monitoring corn hybrids for good tolerance levels, and the breeders are starting to work on it as well. All right, and when we start talking about all these different bacterial diseases, we typically will see them when there is more damage out in fields. So in other words, hail, sand blowing, feeding from insects. So I would just tell you, if you wanna prevent bacterial diseases, you gotta really be scouting for insects. If you have insect problems, get them under control real early. That's gonna make a big difference. Cover crops can also help you, especially if you're worried about sandy soils blowing. If you've got a good cover crop out there to protect the soil, uh, that can keep it in place a little bit longer and reduce some of the injury that could happen to your crop. And then running equipment through. You just wanna be really cautious as you run equipment through fields. Uh, if you're tearing up leaves and damaging plants, make adjustments or, or just figure out a different way to get the job done. The last thing I'll leave you with is rotate your crops. If you can rotate two different crops, that very often helps break that cycle and we see fewer bacterial diseases. Bacterial diseases can certainly be difficult to stop. Fortunately, our Weed of the Week is not so difficult. We'll show you how to stop it right after this.